We are joined with Goose Creek Memorial head coach Shannon Carter. We're going to talk some 9-5A Division I. Coach, last year that district, nobody really, you know, was kind of thrown together. Nobody really knew who was going to come out of it. You guys right. ended up going 5-2, and two, but just talk about how you got through that district and, and, and what made it a special district. Man, it was a, it was a run on from, you know, the previous year I got the job in May and, uh, you know, the world stopped last year in March. And so everybody's scrambling and we knew we had some returners back from the previous year. Um, and then they had some carryover and uh, we, we kind of caught lightning in a bottle. You know, we started off one and one. We dropped a tough one to Lee and then we went on a four game run. Uh, we beat Sterling 15 to 14 and we went on to win four games. And I think we just got hot at the right time. And uh but every game was a nail biter. Every game was a one score contest, and, and so we were, we were grateful for coming out on the on the right side of that. What uh, what do you see with your squad this year? I mean, obviously you've had some graduation issues, and what what who do you have coming back, and who should we look out for? Um, on offense, we have about a handful on both sides. Uh, Mason Duke, he was a uh, he started about three or four games at quarterback. He's going to stabilize us there. He's a six three, one hundred ninety pound kid, number eight in our in his class in, in uh, academics. So he's a very cerebral kid, a lot of talent, good pedigree. His father played college baseball and football, so we're excited about him leading the charge for us. Uh, we have two tackles that have started since I arrived on campus as sophomores, and they'll be a three-year starters. And Ethan Dyson, three-year starters, excuse me. Ethan Dyson and Riley Banks, they're some big kids. Uh, and we'll, we'll fill in the gaps at center and guard. We have some good body types there. Uh, and then we have a returner. We had a sophomore, our lone sophomore starter last year, uh, Gaston at receiver. So he's going to look to – grow into his junior year and, and be a playmaker for us. And on the defensive side, we, we start two more three-year starters. We're really three. Uh, with Jason Gibson, who also plays tight end for us. Uh, Josiah Rice at linebacker and David Pierre. And then uh, Ariel Hector at corner, who missed the season last year by injury, but he started as a sophomore. And then we're going to be filling in the blanks from there. But uh, we're working hard, and, and we're going to put a team out there, and we're going to go compete. Well, you've, uh, by the time this airs, you've already started a little spring ball. How much do you rely on those three-year starters to kind of get everybody else up to speed? Do you have, they have good leadership ability? No doubt about it. Um, they've been in the program from obviously since my day one as sophomores. Um, they, they know the systems. <clears throat> There's about nine to ten of them that have been around for a long, long time. And so we're definitely going to uh, lean on them. They're going to be the nucleus of the team. We've got some good young talent. Uh, but we all know Friday nights are different. Uh, so we're going to try to get them to catch them up to speed. We're going to lean on them heavily. Uh, to show us the way, and, and hopefully we go out there and uh, are able to repeat our success from last year. How do you feel the rest of the district uh, looks like coming up? I know you you know Port Arthur Memorial is always going to bring something to the table there. What do you think about the rest of the district there? I think it's a lot of parity, uh, an extremely uh, good district. I think you have to bring it every Friday night. Um, Baytown, Lee, and Sterling. I mean, Sterling, I know, is bringing back a lot of guys. Lee graduated a lot like we did, just like a lot of teams, but – uh, you have to bring it every Friday night. I think it's going to come down to the last week, kind of like it did last year. The fourth's going to be good. I mean, there's a ton of parity. Uh, so every Friday you're going to have to bring it. And I think it, it's going to be hard to predict who's going to get in this district. It's going to be very, very competitive. Talking about Goose Creek Memorial as a, as a school, you guys had a heck of an athletics year last year with you guys going five and two in district. And then the basketball team was in the top 25 rankings and, and had only three losses going into the into the season there. Talk about – how this new, relatively new school is now com coming, uh, coming of age in uh, sports? I think um, in coaching and, and people, it, it takes energy to move a rock. That's something that I've always came in and said. Um, and it's, it's important who you put in front of kids. Uh, and, you know, our basketball coach, uh, you know, he's a new hire from last year, and he came in with a slogan of new territory. I came in with a slogan of speak victory. And those are pretty much our war cries. Because um, there's there's talent in our building, but just get them to believe and get going the right direction. And I know I've already said it, but we all caught lightning in a bottle. Um, and it's definitely a good feeling, and you have some momentum carrying you. And hopefully we can make that the, the norm and not the, you know, once every blue moon type of deal. And we've really got it going. Uh, you know, our boys soccer team also got in, our girls volleyball team. So we, we're trying to get – we got a girl throwing state track meet this week. So we're trying to get sports to be a uh, – programmatically thing because it carries into the academics fine arts um and it's just a beautiful time right now to be a goose creek memorial well if you don't have the kids believing you certainly got us believing in you so good luck this season and i appreciate you coming on with me 
Absolutely. Thanks for having me.